In the past two years, the media have adopted a new principle. If someone is connected to the current administration, that person can be targeted for destruction for any reason or no reason at all, and it's all virtuous because the president is evil. Well, until last month, David Sorensen was a speechwriter in the White House, and then the Washington Post accused him of domestic violence. Now, why did they do this? Because of the word of his ex-wife. Sorensen lost his job. He says the Post had no evidence that he ever did anything wrong. The Post had no court records, no police report, no evidence, no pictures, nothing. And now his life has been destroyed. David Sorensen joins us tonight with his story. Um, David, I want to say at the outset that we've never met. I've never spoken to you in my life before this. I don't know anything about your marriage. I don't even know your ex-wife's name. Uh, but what struck me about this story, normally I would never get involved in anything like this because I know that these things tend to be really complicated. But what struck me about this story was you say the Post had literally no evidence, no actual evidence you'd done anything wrong? That's right, Tucker. And first of all, these accusations are completely false and fabricated. I've uh, never been violent in any way toward any woman in my entire life. The very thought of it is disgusting to me. It's not the way I was raised. The, uh, the Post, nonetheless, in their ongoing war against President Trump, um, decided to publish a story based on my ex-wife's word alone. Uh, that I was physically violent during our marriage, and um, they had no evidence. I've, I've never had a police report against me for violence. I've never had a restraining order against me. Um, and three of her friends even came out, people I hadn't spoken with in, in years, and said uh, that she was has a, had a history of instability and dishonesty and that they shouldn't believe her and that they actually witnessed her being violent against me. Um, it's, what, just, it's just what, unbelievable. Was she violent against you? She was, actually, and, and I sent the Post and every other media outlet that asked a 13-page document as soon as I was accused, full of text message and photo evidence uh, documenting her violence against me. Uh, she never brought this up in our divorce, a divorce which I initiated, by the way. Uh, there's, there's simply nothing but her word to go on, and it's, it's really shameful in the Post part. But you say you had documentary evidence that she was the perpetrator of violence. Did the Post run that evidence? Um, not that I'm aware of, no, I, I, not that I recall. They, they said that I alleged it. Uh, uh, she actually admitted to it. She admitted to it in text messages and she admitted to it in, in subsequent interviews with the media. Uh, I actually had a reporter one time w during all of this, and by the way, I spoke to every reporter I could. I was very transparent. And I had a reporter say to me, um, what, no, acknowledging that she was violent toward me and, and that, that was a, an established fact, say, uh, well, you know, we heard that you said some pretty nasty things during your marital fights. And uh, I couldn't imagine a reporter saying the same thing uh, to a woman whose, whose husband had, had admittedly been violent toward her. What, so what was the name of the who, standard. Which reporter was that who said that? This was from a, a local uh, TV station up in Maine where, I'm, where I was uh, working before my job that, at White That's House. pretty shocking. So I guess the obvious question is, if, there, if your wife, ex-wife, admitted using violence against you, and there's evidence that she did, mm -hmm. you deny that you used violence against her, and there's no evidence that you did, why mm -hmm. did you lose your job? Well, because I worked for President Trump in the White House. Um, that's, that's all there is to it. I don't think it, it's, it's even in question whether that story would have run if I didn't work there. Um, and, and President Trump, thank God for him at least, is, is, is calling out the media for their ongoing bias, uh, like few people are. But, um, you know, on top of all that, Tucker, for my part, I passed a polygraph exam uh, proving my innocence. Uh, the sitting governor of a state, my former boss, Governor LePage of Maine, offered me my job back. He had that much faith in me. Virtually everybody we both knew came out publicly and said, we don't believe her. Um, and, and they had total faith in me. It's just, it's just it it's, it's be a more one-sided thing. Well, it's certainly Orwellian, and I think you're probably not alone in this. This is the first time we've kind of dug down in one of these stories, and what you find is pretty upsetting. David, thank you for telling mm -hmm. us your story. I appreciate it. Thank you, Tucker. Well, the left is pushing hard for a ban on assault weapons, whatever those are. We still haven't really decided. But how will that ban work exactly, and will it keep anybody safe? We'll ask someone who supports it next.